Today I start to put the Ichimoku indicator to the test. I've implemented what's known as the Tenkan-sen Kijun-sen crossover strategy and I'll be quantitatively researching and backtesting it. So, does it really provide a trading edge that's capable of delivering alpha? Find out after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. In the previous two episodes, I've covered the theory of two popular Ichimoku strategies. The first of these was what's called the Tenkan Kijun crossover, and then another called the Kumo breakout. I originally intended to then cover the theory for a few more of these before moving on to quantifiably researching and backtesting all of them. But I've decided to change the order a little. What I'm now going to do is cover the theory of each strategy and immediately then go into the research and backtesting phase for each of those strategies. I think this is more likely to flow more coherently. For those of you that have been following recent episodes, you'll know that this is all part of the Spotlight on Indicators series. And the focus initially is on the Ichimoku indicator. But in later episodes of the series, I'll be covering different indicators. So I want to briefly look at some of the principles I'll be using when I actually implement each of these strategies. Now this may come as a surprise to some people, but I won't be performing an optimization of this at all. I will be sticking to the default Ichimoku parameter values. So there won't be any possibility of me over optimizing the Ichimoku indicator. But as you'll see in a moment, even with those default parameters, we can still get fairly decent results. Now, are they the best possible results? No, certainly not. But for anyone wanting to pursue any of these strategies further, then that is a task that you can perform yourself in terms of optimizing those so that you can get the results that you require personally. Now, because I'm not going to be performing an optimization, I'm going to use the most recent 10 years worth of data for the backtest, and I won't be reserving any of that for out of sample testing. However, for anyone that does want to perform these optimizations, then I'd probably recommend keeping something like two and a half years of the most recent data for your out of sample validation and optimizing on maybe the previous 7.5 years. Now, as I've said before, Ichimoku is what's often called an all-in-one indicator. And so it provides mechanisms to implement various filters such as trend filters. And the principle I'm using is that if Ichimoku has a mechanism for a particular filter, then I won't be using any other indicator. I will just use Ichimoku. But there is an exception, and there's one particular type of filter that many of you will be aware of because I've produced videos on this in the past, which is called a noise filter. Now, Ichimoku has no way of determining what the noise of the price action is. And so here, I will be using an alternative indicator called the Kaufman Efficiency Ratio. And if you look back in the archive, you'll see where I've presented on this in the past. And the value of this indicator is tremendous, especially around trend following strategies. Now, for those of you that haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the video description to take you to those noise filter videos. 
So let's take a look at the ultimate results that have been achieved with this strategy. And I would probably consider these results satisfactory. They're not brilliant, but remember, these are without any optimization of Ichimoku whatsoever. And so I'm sure by taking a sensible approach to optimization, much better results could be achieved. But as I said, I'll leave that to you. Now, just to explain this chart, the green line that you see is the high watermark of the equity in blue. And then I've set the risk tolerance level here at 10% which means that if the equity falls 10% from that high, that's the level indicated by the red line. And so the drawdowns here are much higher than I would like to see in a backtest. And so to reduce those, there's a couple of options. One, of course, is that you can perform an optimization to get a better looking equity curve. And secondly, you can also reduce the aggressiveness of the position sizing. But of course, as well as reducing the drawdowns, that will also reduce the return. So some basic metrics here. These are the results that I achieved using Ichimoku on the H1 timeframe. This produced just over two and a half thousand trades. The profit factor of the results you see here is 1.2. And one of my preferred performance metrics, compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown, is coming out at 1.18. I've also run this identical strategy on the M15 time frame and also the M5 time frame. M15 produces comparable results. The M5 time frame still makes a profit, but I think that charges are beginning to outweigh the gains of each of the trades, and so the results aren't quite as good on M5. So, as I said, these are the final results, but the implementation of a strategy is a multi-stage process. And the first part of this strategy that I'm going to be looking at is the crossover of the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen lines. These are the rules of the strategy that I went through previously in the theory session. And after the crossover has been implemented, I'll also be implementing a trend filter, which is ensuring that the crossover occurs on the correct side of the Kumo. So above the Kumo, if it's for a long trade or below the Kumo for a short trade. And then for a slightly longer term trend filter, I'll be looking at where the Chiku span line is in relation to the price 26 periods ago. And then it's a Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen cross in the opposite direction, for the closure and for the stop loss, I'm going to place this at the opposite side of the cloud to where the crossover takes place. So if it's a long trade and the crossover is occurring above the cloud, then I'm going to give the cloud as much chance as possible to act as resistance and only stop that trade out if it reaches the opposite side, so the bottom side of the Kumo. So looking at that on a chart here, the Tenkan Sen line is the red line here, and you can see that that crosses over the blue Kijun Sen line at this point here, which is above the cloud, and the Chiku span is also above the price 26 periods ago. So as we move through this implementation phase of the strategy, I'll show you how the code builds up as we add in different components. At the moment, the function looks fairly simple. All that I'm doing here is calling another function that says, is there a bullish crossover of the Tenkan Kijun lines? If so, then return the signal status of long. And by bullish crossover, of course, I mean that the Tenkan Sen has crossed over and above the Kijun Sen. I have another function that asks if there's been a bearish crossover, so a crossover in the opposite direction. And if that's the case, signal status is set to short, and that gets returned from the function. And if neither of those two events have happened, then I simply return no trade because there's no action to take. Now, you might be wondering why I've created functions to determine the crossover of these Tenkan and Kijun lines. And the reason for this is because of the calculations behind these two lines, the crossovers aren't always clean. 
So let me show you what I mean by that. This is a good example here. You can see that we have a crossover of the Tenkan Sen from below to above the Kijun Sen. However, it's not a simple crossover. So when it crosses in the opposite direction here, we can see that it comes straight across the Kijun Sen. So this is what I'm terming a clean crossover. However, here, the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen actually have the same value for about four or five bars. And so the normal code that you would use for a crossover can't be used here. We actually have to iterate back to see if there genuinely has been a proper crossover of those lines. And so that's the reason I've had to build a custom function specifically for the Tenkan Kijun crossover, which is what these are here. I will be covering this in detail in a future episode. So for anyone who wants to code this, they'll be able to look at the code that I've used and then either use that or adapt that for their own purposes. However, for now, all you need to know is that I've created those functions that perform that task and based on the results, I'm then issuing either a long or a short return from this function. And this is the only rule that I'm using for the trade entry. For the close signal, it's a little bit simpler because if the current trade direction is long, then it simply looks for the current Tenkan Sen value being less than the current Kijun Sen. And if it is, that returns a close long request. And if it's the opposite way around, it returns a close short value. And then if neither of those combinations apply, it simply says do nothing. So if there's a trade already open, it will remain open. Now, obviously, these return values are very specific to my own EA framework. And you would need to adapt these if you were building this function into your own expert advisor. And you'd need to return the values that were applicable to the way that your expert advisor has been developed. So let's now start off a backtest in the strategy test. I'm going to be running this on a multi-symbol EA. So this is going to be incorporating 28 currency pairs. So let's make a start. OK, so I'm going to leave that running now and come back in a moment when the strategy tester has finished. OK, so that's now finished. And as you can see, the results are less than good. But you have to remember, we've only implemented one small part of the Ichimoku strategy, which is the signal itself. We haven't yet implemented any filters, be those trend filters or noise filters. And there's also a number of other steps that I'll go through in future episodes that will help to achieve those better results. So let's just look at a comparison here. So the orange line here are the results that we've just achieved by looking at that Tenkan Kijun crossover only. And the blue results are what I achieved by implementing other aspects of the Ichimoku strategy. But neither of these lines have undertaken any form of optimization. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be doing in the next episode. And this revolves around the implementation of a noise filter. Noise filters can be incredibly useful for any trend following strategy. And the job of the noise filter is to avoid those times when price is acting erratically. Because when price acts in that way for a trend following strategy, the result is that you get whipsawed. And so what this type of filter is actually doing is reducing the number of whipsaws and increasing the ratio of successful trades. And you'll get an indication of just how important this type of filter is when you see the improvement on results next time. Following this, just to give a bit more of a look ahead, I'll be looking then in episode 13 at asset research. And those of you who saw the very beginning of this series will remember that I said I had a suspicion that Ichimoku might work 
best on the yen pairs. And so I'm going to show you the results across all 28 currency pairs that are in the data set, and we'll see if my suspicion was correct. So be sure to tune in for that next episode. If you subscribe to the channel and ask for alerts, then you'll get notified when that and other episodes get released. And now, until next time, trade safe.